Good afternoon. Recently, I made a rather pessimistic video detailing all the problems with the railway and what their causes were. However, I thought, it's all very well and good pointing out the problems, but what would I actually do to fix them? And that's why I've started this new series. Now, I'm no genius. I can't solve everything in one big video, but what I can do is, bit by bit, assess individual problems and try and give an overall plan for how things should be improved. Today, we'll be examining the operational structure of a new, nationalised operator and what branding it should use to better convey its services to the general public. Right, first things first, let's talk about structure. In other words, who should actually own, run and fund the railway? We need one national body to both maintain and own infrastructure and run the services. Previously, this has been prohibited by a 1991 EU directive, but I'm sorry Brussels, that's probably the one thing I'm glad to see the back of. A single organisation should both own and operate tracks, stations and trains, and ideally have a stake in manufacturing too. However, I concede that it would be very difficult to regain the skills lost on privatisation of this sector, and there are plenty of foreign manufacturers perfectly capable of creating good designs, so this isn't necessarily essential. However, we should at least let this organisation own the trains themselves, though it would be extremely expensive to purchase them all in one fell swoop. They're currently owned not by train companies, but by Roscoe's, those being rolling stock leasing companies. Roscoe's have a lot of influence, and therefore the best path to end their dominance would probably be a gradual one, whereby new fleets of trains are purchased outright by the operator rather than the Roscoe's. Eventually, if this tactic were to be maintained, the entire rail fleet would be in the hands of the government. Now, I want to make it quite clear that I'm not proposing a sweeping round of nationalisations because I think it will improve the service in and of itself. Far from it. I think if you were to only nationalise, the service would probably get worse. However, when you have a supportive government, us, if we were to be implementing these changes, then it is by far the most efficient and cost-effective way to run a railway and improve it. Open access operators would still be permitted, of course, but freight should probably be included in this single organisation as well, though. Privatisation hasn't exactly been successful in massively growing the freight sector, and it's a rather profitable enterprise. And, by bringing on board the managers of today's rail freight, we can see these profits used to subsidise loss-making passenger services. As with the passenger realm, though, we do still want to have some private sector competition. A page could certainly be taken out of the EU's book by requiring infrastructure operators to give over spare paths to private operators if needed. An independent body, presumably Transport Focus or the Department for Transport, would be needed to oversee and ensure that the state rail company was not abusing its power and preventing private access where it would be appropriate. But that's enough of private relations. Let's get back to our state rail company. It should, technically, fall under the Department for Transport. However, management should be entirely separate. It should make its own decisions, with its only connection to central government being funding and the rail minister. The job of the rail minister would be similar to what it is now, with them representing the needs of the railways in Parliament and advocating for what it requires. Funding, meanwhile, must be consistent and predictable so the railway can properly plan around it. Instead of the current paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck model, the railway should operate in five-year seasons. Railway management should work with the government to identify the main priorities in improving the service over the next season. A fixed annual budget for those next five years can then be agreed upon, which will make planning far easier. Of course, if circumstances changed, the railway can choose to reallocate that fixed level of funding. Despite operations being under one organisation, you don't necessarily need centralisation everywhere. Certain collections of routes, stations and particular locations can be grouped together under various departments. For example, regional services out of Bristol would all be operated under one command. That said though, they shouldn't be too different, and there must be a degree of uniformity amongst these clusters. This means that, say, if there was a failure with a locomotive, another one from a different group can be found. OK, so we've successfully created our new organisation, it's got through Parliament and everything is good to go. But what should the public see of this? And what should our branding be like? Well, the single organisation I've alluded to should have an evocative name, 
British Railways would be my choice. The railways adds a sense of glamour that you don't really get with British Rail, yet it's still simple and clear enough to convey the service well. That said though, I would be fine keeping the Great British Railways name if that were to come to fruition before this plan could be implemented, and their revised version of the classic rail alphabet typeface is amazing. It could do with being slightly bolder on station signage, but overall I'm very impressed with its wayfinding. Logo-wise, I think the British Rail double arrow is great. It's iconic and timeless, and the fact that it's persevered beyond privatisation is a testament to its high-quality design. However, I'm no designer. I can't really design an ideal livery. I don't have the software, let alone ideas. You'd obviously need a professional designer to work out something proper. Still, I can't help but look wistfully at the traditional liveries used by British Railways in the past. I think they look great. I'm just not really sure if it would work on modern stock. Something a little more vibrant might be needed. As for the designer, I do think best impressions might be a good choice. Whilst I don't think their liveries look the best per se, they are very good at suiting a wide variety of different train fleets, which is obviously what you'd need for a nationalised operator. Potentially a competition should be held. I cannot stress how important it is to get the design perfect. This applies to station signage, crockery, carpets, everything a passenger could ever interact with, and sort of the crew as well. It should be a little bit like the 1965 Corporate Identity Manual, which created the all-encompassing British Rail brand. Now, as crucial as a unified identity is for national operations, it is equally vital that we give local authorities the capability to do what they want with their own transport systems. Well, within set standards, of course. Every urban area of a reasonable size should get its own regional transport authority. They should have control of local transport, namely buses, trams, suburban trains, metros and hire bicycles, as well as a few other niche things. Is this sounding familiar? We had it in the past, but then got rid of it. Should be a little bit like Transport for London. But the operators should have the power to either run buses, trams or whatever directly, or contract them out to private operators, depending on what they see most fit. In less urban areas, we should still have a local transport authority, but it should be over a wider area and be based on the county rather than the city. Counties could even join up their networks and operate a combined system. It's up to them. Either way, they'd still be in control of their own infrastructure spending and what they prioritise. Now, I know that management structure isn't exactly the most glamorous topic to discuss, but it ultimately is the backbone of a rail network, and once we've got it sorted out, everything else should come much easier. Thank you for watching. Feel free to join my Discord server, link in the description if you want. It's a little bit chaotic at the moment, so hopefully you can talk a bit of sense into the members. Some of them could certainly do with it.